I've set up two tables in this database that are just like the ones from the article. There's a student's table with detailed information about each student, and a student grades table with the student ID, test, and test grade. Now, if we just selected from student grades, we'd see student ID, test, and grade. But I don't want to see that. I want to see the student's first name, their last name, and their test and their grade, because I think of the students as having names, not IDs. Now, as you probably figured out, the student ID in the grades table is related to the ID of each row in the students table. So we just need some way to bring these two tables together. And we can do that with joins. So there are various ways that we can join tables in SQL. And we're going to try out a bunch of those right now. So the simplest way is called a cross join. And I can do that just by saying select star from and then putting both of the table names after here. Now that join returned the Cartesian product of all the rows. And you might remember that concept from math class. Basically, for every row in the first table, it creates a row for each row in the other table. And we end up with eight rows since it's creating four rows for each of these two rows. That's a simple join to do, but it's also the least useful because it's matched everything with everything. But really, we only want the rows matched together if the student ID matches the ID of the student row. So we can do that with the inner join, which is the super useful join. Inner join. OK, so one way to do an inner join is that we're going to do what we did before with the two table names, and then we're adding a where. And the where is going to do that checking to see that the student ID matches the student's like grade student ID. So it's basically taking that Cartesian product and filtering it down to the rows that match. And there we have it. That is what I want. So that worked. Um, this is called an implicit inner join. And it works, but it's also not considered best practice. So I'm going to show you another way of getting the same result called an explicit inner join. And that's actually using the join keyword. So for that, we're actually going to start and just have one table name after the from. So from students, join student grades on students.id. It's the same check as before, student grades.student. ID. Ta-da! Same results, but this is best practice using that join, making it explicit. Great. So now that I have those tables joined, I can filter down these results, whittle down the column names to just the ones that I care about. So I want their first name, their last name, the test, and the grade. Great. And we can use, on these join queries, we can use any of the other things we've learned before. We can use where, we can use group by. Like, for example, if I want to filter down the results to just grades greater than 90, we can say where grade greater than 90. Aha. And now I can email those students and give them a little virtual high five. Okay. So, Looking here, see how we have these column names, and we're pulling out these column names from two different tables. And this is working because we have two different column names in each of the tables. So it assumes when it sees first name, it must be from the student's table. But what would happen if there was a grade column in both tables? Like maybe we had an overall grade in the student's table. Then it would get confused, and it could pick out the one from students. It could pick out the one from student grades. So in fact, what would be safer is to explicitly tell SQL where we're getting these from. So we can say students dot. So we're just adding a prefix in students dot, and then this one is from student grades, and this one is also from student grades. So now it knows exactly where it's pulling those column names, and it's not ambiguous at all. 
We always like to be non-ambiguous when we can, when we're making these scripts and programs. All right, so that is our basic inner join, and it's what you'll use for most of your joins across related tables in life. <laughs> Stay tuned, and I'll show you one other type of join, maybe two.